Well, hey, welcome back to another episode of Drinking and Thinking. Today we're making a cocktail called the Silver Blood and talking about why in the world there are so many denominations in Christianity. So grab something cold and stick around. Hey, if you haven't already, follow us on our socials. Really, any of the socials that you you utilize, mm-hmm. we're certainly on at Let's and Drink and Think. Sorry, at Let's Drink. Let's Think. Drink Think. Uh, submit email comment. Uh, you can certainly find us. Email us on our website at hello at Let's Drink and Think dot com. Yep. And uh, if you are watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast, we would love if you would subscribe to the channel, like, review, share with all your friends, do all that sort of stuff. Um, Every single week, kind of the goal is to make an alcoholic and a non-alcoholic version of the cocktail so that you can be a part of this and then just sit in and listen to the conversation about just kind of real life topics and things that we ponder from a Christian perspective and uh, that's sort of that. So enough about that. Let's get into what is this cocktail, the Silver Blood, and how do you make it? All right, so this Silver Blood is a really pretty simple cocktail. Uh, We're gonna start with three ounces of silver tequila. Really any brand you wanna use, we're Mm -hmm. mixing it pretty well so you don't have to go top shelf by any means. We're gonna use one ounce of sweet vermouth, one ounce of triple sec, and we're gonna splash a little grenadine on the top. Yep, Uh, I am making the non-alcoholic version. I'm gonna call it the Liars Special because we're using the range of Liars non-alcoholic alternatives. So Agave Blanco is their silver tequila. Aperitif Rosso is their version of Sweet Vermouth, and then Orange Sec is their version of Triple Sec, so. Perfect. Now, you're using Liars across the board today, so this Mm -hmm. is kind of like a Liars special. Uh, Yeah, (laughs) it definitely is. Um, We've used Liars quite a bit for a lot of episodes, Um, not because they're sponsoring us, although we certainly We would appreciate it, Liars. We use your stuff quite a bit. But what I've noticed or what I've discovered is that Liars is the non-alcoholic brand that has the biggest range of NA alternatives. So a lot of the other companies have, you know, two or three, mostly a gin and a whiskey, sometimes a rum. Liars really has the full range of things like a sweet vermouth right. or a, a triple sec sort of thing. So um, yeah, that's what we're using today. Yeah, and if you follow us already, if you watch our our channel, you'll notice that we try to elevate our cocktails. We want you to be able to experience cocktails that maybe you have to go to a bar for, maybe you're a cocktail lounge. These are simple cocktails that you can really start off on your own, uh, make them in a simple way and realize you can make a really good high level cocktail yep. by yourself. You don't Absolutely. need to be an expert bartender by any means. Hey, smell mm-hmm. that. <clears throat> Tell me what you think. Golly, man. That does I not. Like it. That does not have a typical tequila. No, but it's smell got a good it. like uh, that. That smell. That it's almost like the agave without the harshness that would yeah. typically come with. It's very sweet. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very no, I like sweet. it a lot. So speaking of sweet, we have a little sweet vermouth. vermouth. One ounce of this. And sweet vermouth. Uh, you'll find this on a lot of cocktails. This is not normally going to be the front end uh, drink that you're going to want to use. You're not going to ever find a. Uh, a cocktail with primarily sweet vermouth is usually yeah. an additive. Um, and sometimes you'll find that people who use sweet vermouth, um, it, it can have an off taste at times. Um, I know for myself, when I make martinis, typically I just splash it in the glass itself and then actually throw the glass out. So I'm actually uh, using just the really the rim mm-hmm. of the sweet vermouth around the glass. I don't use a whole lot, uh, but to each their own. Like you just mentioned about elevating the cocktails, that addition of that little bit of extra elevated flavor yes. is what the sweet vermouth is for. Absolutely. So. Sweet vermouth, by the way, is really just white wine. All right, you will also notice if you watched our channel before, we use Boston shakers. This is a shaken drink. This is the bigger cup. We are gonna use this to mix in, and then the ice is for the smaller cup. So, a splash of grenadine also goes in uh, the shaker to begin with. A splash works out to about a teaspoon or a pretty healthy pour on a bar spoon. Uh, if you don't have a bar spoon or a Boston shaker or any of these elements that we're using, you can certainly, uh, on our YouTube channel as well as on our website, we have all of our Amazon affiliate links to get the exact same stuff that we're using. Not that you have to, but if you're looking to kind of increase your home bar, yep. we've got you covered. Absolutely. Go ahead and uh, add the ice. And we really want to shake this vigorously to incorporate all the elements together. 
with this kind of drink, uh, you, there's no ice here. There's nothing to hide the, the tone and the color that you're gonna see here. Um, so make sure that you shake this really, really well. Mm -hmm. I love to shake a drink like this until you start seeing that frost on the outside of the Boston shaker. Yep. There's no need to double strain this, but if you want to, if you're afraid of maybe any little ice chunks in yep. there, you certainly can double strain. But uh, once it's shaken, pour into the glass. Golly, that's a good looking color. Now, uh, there is quite the difference in color yeah. between these two. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what you think of the difference, but uh, Wow. This right here is a uh, non-alcoholic and an alcoholic version of the Silver Blood. Cheers. Cheers. Silver Blood. Silver Blood. I cheers. can't cheers, cheers because yeah, it's neither too can full. I. I it's can't too reach. Full. Uh, cheers from a distance. Go. Let's see. Ugh. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> That is sweet. Yeah. I wow. love um, tequila forward cocktails. I hate vermouth. <laughs> mm. Is the tequila not coming through? No. Well, the vermouth is just overpowering just, to me. It's too much vermouth yeah. for you. Yep. You said vermouth is wine? Mm hmm. Do it's a, does it's yours. It's um, a diluted wine, but yeah. You should try that. All right. Uh, I drank from Yours over kind here. of looks like a Coors Light, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Which is appealing. The Coors N.A. It's more appealing than what you're drinking. <laughs> okay, don't comment yet. Mm -hmm. Is that like, I'm getting cherry medicine? Uh, yeah, that's interesting you say that. I was getting a, I don't know, specifically cherry, but there's like a medicine, almost sweetness, where it's not like sweet, like eating a, like a, a pie, but it's sweet, like almost um artificial i don't know how to describe this it's interesting it's a very interesting drink i would drink that over this but that's because really? of the vermouth I, the oh. vermouth is for me over the top i think it's very bland <clears throat> bland you've used that word to describe half the cocktails we've made which i find a little personally offensive for the entire show <laughs> that you yes. keep using that word this hey drink thanks for watching drinking fine. and thinking where we make absolute trash bland drinks yes Mm -hmm. This your is opinion. fine. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by bland? I don't think this is bland. I wouldn't at call all. it bland. It tastes flat. Well, yeah, there's no bubbles. No sudsy suds. It's not but it tastes to... like it should have bubbles. Mm. So it tastes like an old flat, whatever it was supposed to be. It tastes like a cherry 7 up. That had too much ice left in the glass. Yes, that you let sit. You described yours perfectly. And melted, and now it's all the carbonation's down. gone. All the carbonation's yeah. gone. Exactly. You so, what would you call that? Bland. Bland <laughs> and, and flat. All of bland that. and flat. All yeah. of that. Just yeah. critiquing you for Dave. it, and I ended up with the same words. Dave, first of all, thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, second of all, what do you think? I gotta try it again. You know what though? Okay, that was a pretty uh, negative. That is honestly yeah. kind of what it tastes like, but I don't mind it. I actually- I like, like yours, yours is not this bad. This is yeah. not a bad cocktail. I don't know about yours. I like drinking it. It's after the aftertaste I don't like. Drinking it is good. It said aftertaste is bland and right. that Drinking it is fine. <clears throat> hmm. It's right after. It's got a very fruity, Yeah. Mind, the NA does at least, very fruity fruity forward sort of well here's what i'll say about yours if i was at a cocktail lounge and a bunch of friends similar to a setting like this and just having good cocktails and i wanted an a version that's what i got i would be happy hmm. i wouldn't be upset about it mm -hmm. so there you um, go but if you ordered for a drink an like alcoholic this, version nah, no uh, i don't know if i would because of the vermouth i knew what i was getting into mixing this drink making it um it's it's just not for me Sure. Yeah. Well, you even mentioned in making it, typically you don't. I was holding you, back, you, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like using a lot of vermouth, no, and this no, was, no. yeah. yeah. I've Dave. never had vermouth, but. Do you it, know what vermouth is? No. The way that you said it even tells vermouth. me you've never had it. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I've never, had, I've never had Duluth, but if I ever. <laughs> I've heard of it. Duluth, <laughs> I've heard of Duluth. Yeah. Um. um is it's, that a trading company? Uh, yeah, <laughs> something. Yeah. 
I don't know. It's it's a weird flavor. Yeah. I would love maybe after this episode to mix another one in the way that I would do it if it was for me. Because oh. I think there's a way that I could make the silver blood without the vermouth being so forward. Sure. Um, do the same thing that you would for a martini where you just kind of splash it around and correct, there, pour yeah. it out so you get... Not to get too deep into it, but how I normally make a martini, and this would certainly qualify in how I'd make it, mm -hmm. I put ice in. That's the first step when I make it is put ice in this actual glass. Yep. And I pile it in, and I pour the vermouth until it's about as high as it is right now on here so that it's high enough where it's kind of coating the glass, and then I just chuck it out. It's That's cheap. That's a lot. It is. It's but cheap. But, yeah, vermouth is cheap. What is it, like eight bucks for Correct. a bottle? Correct, yeah. And so what I'll do is I'll kind of let the condensation get on the glass itself, and so when you actually pour the vodka or gin or whatever you're using for it, it's already got a chilled glass there so that it, the vermouth helps the ice melt a, a little bit. A chilled glass would also be yep. a good step for this cocktail. I agree. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm a proponent for that in most mm -hmm. cocktails like this. And then you still get a hint of it, but it's not overpowering like this is that sweetness that you're coming through right mm -hmm. now it's really overpowering and that back end flavor after you swallow yes. you know notice that flavor it, it, that's the vermouth it hits you. Yep, yeah that's that vermouth okay. the tequila is really pretty subtle in this though oh wow okay so i'd maybe go with like an eighth ounce vermouth <laughs> <laughs> not a whole ounce i don't know what i'm supposed to be tasting as far as tequila goes because i don't think we've used that Agave Blanco yet from Liars. Yeah, I tell you, it, it's good, man. I, I think it's a yeah, I don't mind this respectable NA cocktail. Kevin, you said it was bland. I mean, you're going to finish it, though. I mean, it's oh, not, yeah. Uh, you're not going to throw it away. It's not bad. Yeah. I can't okay. wait till Just we have a drink that he does. Just trying to describe, you know, what does it taste like? I don't know if the one with egg white will have come out or not by oh, the time this airs, but that was definitely true. not, no. not for I, We you. should do another one. <laughs> we should do as many drinks with foamy egg white as possible. <laughs> I have a great that, idea for the next, next episode, by the way. I'll share with you okay. out there. Why Perfect. would anybody want to drink that? I thought, I thought it was, that was great. great. <laughs> that was my favorite drink we've made yet. Wow. It might be a like, for me, uh, too. Like the pie with the egg white fluffed up on it? It's sort like of. a meringue on top yeah, of it. It's, it's sort of, but it it's not like that. It. <laughs> yeah. It looked like it? It did. It's I just think, uh, well, imagine like a nice foam head on the top of like a good beer. Yeah. It's okay. like that it's like on that. top of a cocktail. Oh, it's and just I, no, white no, it all. wasn't like that at I all. I think your problem was when you first started drinking it, you didn't drink to the liquid. <laughs> That's you were just, 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 just drinking the egg white. Just drink foam. <laughs> yeah. This egg white sucks. <laughs> I think you had nightmares at night. Mm. Uh, wow. Okay. Well, go ahead and make the silver blood if you want to make it on your own. If you like vermouth, uh, this is definitely a drink for you. If you don't, Adjust. Adjust accordingly. Adjust accordingly. So uh, if you want the recipe for how to make this drink, you can find it at our website, letsdrinkandthink.com. And you can also send us an email if you have drink suggestions or topics you'd like us to cover. Maybe you've got a question about Christianity or just something that you've been pondering. We'd love to uh, accept all sorts of those. Mm -hmm. And we'd love to accept sponsorships mm -hmm. as well. We're not desperate. <laughs> Dave, <laughs> Dave. So, yeah. welcome back, man. Yeah. It's yeah. good to have yeah, it's, you. It's good to be here. Welcome back. Yeah. Uh, today, we're going to talk about uh, denominations. Mm -hmm. So different sections of Christianity. There's Catholic, there's Lutheran, there's Baptist, Presbyterian, Don't Anglican. Don't forget the Methodists. Methodist, Assemblies of God. Uh, I was going to say Universalist, but I don't really think those are Christians. So <laughs> let's not go there. That Although... Freeze. We can go there if we want. There's Freeze, EV Freeze, Pentecostals, Foursquare, four uh, Covenant four square Church. Really? How many more can we possibly yeah, name? There's a lot. Yeah. There's no shortage. Um, we all claim to worship the same God mm -hmm. through the same Jesus. Why in the world are there so many? You missed one. Oh. Non-denom. Non-denom. Non uh -huh. yeah. We're going to not in... be a part of denominations by making our own non-denomination <laughs> that's also kind, kind of, a, of denomination. a denomination. Let's not make fun of them <laughs> in their weird ways. Um, Non-denom. That's a good one. That, I've never thought about it like that, but you're right. They're their own they, denomination. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they for sure We're non-denomination, but we're our own denomination. So uh, yeah, what's that's funny about non-denominational people is sometimes the reason they go non-denomination non yeah. is because they don't like the disunity. Yes. <laughs> so, no, no, that's, so they make so, one more disunity. Correct. <laughs> that's so interesting because up until this moment, I've always like kind of heard people will go to a non-denomination. Oh, yeah, I get it. 
But then I was like, wait, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you just went to a different denomination. <laughs> yeah, no, that actually put more not. thought than one second there's, in there. There's 2,000 yeah. denominations that we can't quite agree with. Yeah. So we're going to be the 2,000 so first. The 2000 <laughs> first. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, mm-hmm. Not to cut uh, them down. They're, they're no, no different. Well, you can else. cut down any one of the yeah, denominations. Right, anyone. We're yeah. all just as... But here's, here's the thing, I think, from an outside perspective from somebody who's not Christian. And I've heard this. I'm sure all of us have heard this as well. The idea of why would I want to be a Christian? Why would I want to be a part of you? Right. You can't even get along with yourselves. Like, why do I want to be a part of that just mess that you guys are with so much infighting and different doctrines? And like, what it's, it has got to be absolutely confusing frustrating whatever from the outside looking in Mm -hmm. at the dysfunction of denomination Mm -hmm. yeah i don't know like Uh, on a positive note i think in the last 20 years a lot of those walls of separation have come down there's still separation but there's not this we're gonna stay a lot of churches don't put their flag out there say this is what we are it's not as important anymore and I, th- I think that's uh, that's a movement that's happening more and more. I, I know if you went back to the 50s, a Catholic and a Lutheran couldn't get married. Yeah, I was going to say a Lutheran's know, a Catholic. Mm-hmm. Or a Methodist or that's a Baptist. That's still or, around today. Well, yeah. I, I think f- to be Catholic, you can't be you know, married. Non-Catholic. Yeah, you have mm-hmm. to become Catholic. But I think mm-hmm. other Unless denominations you're C&E, then you're cool. used to do that as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a Baptist would never marry uh, an Assembly of God person or... No. You know, and so they. I think that that has really come down a lot. So on a positive note, that has that is not as strict as it used to be, but or as prevalent. Yeah, I mean, in terms of like the repercussions of families yeah. mm-hmm. shunning you or shutting you off from yeah, oh, which gosh. certainly I guess probably still happens, but doesn't happen nearly as much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And there is nothing Christian about it. Right. Right. Nothing about denominations. Period. Well, I understand why denominations are their strength in numbers, no different than unity. That's why there's denominations, because we want to be unified. When we're going to take uh, 400 churches and all unite and build a, a camp or have a college or, you know, send out missionaries, uh, there's strength in numbers. You can, an organi- organization is a good thing. Organization is from God, and having numbers in an organization is good. But the dividing lines between these groups is what's ridiculous and i think god looks at it and just shakes his head you know yeah that's what i was just going to ask you because don't you think the it's almost been the opposite i think you're right strength in numbers everybody kind of working towards the same goal Mm -hmm. but that division has diluted that to now instead of having all of us doing the exact same thing Mm -hmm. uh worshiping in the exact same way having the same mindset and not arguing over minor things in a lot of ways it's created a vision. It's created multiple sects of the church and, and created, obviously, multiple denominations. Mm-hmm. Um, don't you think that's that same mentality has actually hurt us going back 2,000 years? I mean, from yeah. the very start? Absolutely, Absolutely it has. Uh, I mean, I don't think it's a good thing. I don't think none of us would agree that 2,000 Christian denominations is a good thing. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not from God. You know, where can you put the finger? Here's the problem. Is one denomination right and the other wrong? I, I think this is something that you bring up a lot. And uh, it's if what unif- if we focused on what unifies us rather than what divides us, there are things we all believe that we would all die for. You said we all believe in, we all talk to the same God through the same Savior. Mm-hmm. And that's probably generally true for mm-hmm. 1,900 of these 2,000 anyway. And uh, why... Those things we would die for, those things should unite us. The other stuff, uh, we're not all going to agree, but do we have to is the point. Mm -hmm. But do we have to agree? No. uh, A whole denomination will be set up on the fact that you have to pray in Jesus' name only. You know, you have to baptize in Jesus' name only, not in the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Really? Is that a dividing point? But I guess we've made it that way, you know. Or or way Mm -hmm. back to, you know, a thousand I think it was around the year 1000 where the the first church split came from. Is it mm-hmm. the spirit proceeds from the father right. yeah. or the father and the, and son? the son? And like, yeah. what are you? Oh, come on. Yep. I think even at like a, 
a micro level just within a community, right? So what are there probably 12 or 15 different churches within a five mile radius yeah. of our city? Yeah, right. but a couple of those would be the same denomination. There's a few Lutherans. Okay, so yep. 10. But even those, even even under Lutheran, there's there's, different, there's yeah. like four different yeah. denominations. Or but split. how much more effective would Christianity, would the mm-hmm. church be mm-hmm. at having a voice in the community if all 50 of us from all our different mm-hmm. churches came together to make a group of 350 right, right. or 500? Yeah. You know, how much, how much easier would it be mm-hmm. to invite people who aren't Christians not hear all this different messaging about, mm-hmm. well, my church does this and my church does this and come to my, no, mm-hmm. listen, we're all a part of this. And there's 500 of us from the community that all come together mm-hmm. because right. we all believe these same core doctrines. Mm-hmm. Like what I, one of you has mentioned about the effectiveness yeah. and mm-hmm. how it's been lost mm-hmm. with. Yeah. One with of the, this. one of the reasons this is, you know, in America more than anybody else has been just a breeding ground for this because we haven't had that much competition in America, yep. so we had to compete with each other. Yep. I could see that if <laughs> if so if Islam started building churches in every community and there were Buddhist churches in every community, you would see Christians come to a Christian church in the community. It would just happen because, mm. because there's a prominent presence of Buddhism and there's a prominent presence of Islam. Mm. And so we haven't had that issue in America. I, I would disagree, though, because there are some major cities, including in our own state, Minneapolis, mm-hmm. that has a major Islamic sect. Yet mm-hmm. in downtown Minneapolis, how many churches are there oh, that are separated tons. from one another? Yeah, it's I still think though, that the population four of them on there. every corner of the block. Yeah. You right, know? and they're all different types mm-hmm. of church. And, and that's where I think the other argument is, is maybe... Um, Maybe denominations is one way to look at, but also styles of church is another way. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think all of us are similar in nature. We're all going to attend a very similar type of church, mm-hmm. right? Sure. But there's a lot of people who don't ever want to step foot in the type of church we want to step foot in. And, right. and that's where I wonder, you, you talk about the, the three Lutherans or whatever churches, you know, in, in a local area. Yeah. And to be clear, what we're talking about is not just three uh, three distinct locations. It's three distinct ways about doing church and what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's not just a physical location, but I think there's, there's some good things that come from having different, maybe denominations or more or less different styles of church because options, different options might be a better way to phrase it. Cause let me ask you, do you, can a Catholic go to heaven? Well, it depends on if their trust is in Jesus. Okay, or exactly. Not. Can a uh, uh, assemblies of God? Can a freak? We yep. can all accomplish the same yep. thing, right? Yep. And so certainly we can argue about doctrine. We can argue about interpretations of the Bible. Mm-hmm. However, if we're all accomplishing the same goal, is it all bad? Dave, <laughs> I would think. I would think that Scholar? together we would achieve the mission more effectively Hmm. honestly um so to have so many denominations and have us spread out so far Mm -hmm. like you have these little churches of 25 to 50 people well if we had them if we we were all together and as one group Mm -hmm. i think we'd be a lot more effective you gotta look just from a practical side just resources right Mm -hmm. so people resources money resources space resources to split that all up yeah. into our own little factions is incredibly inefficient. Yeah. I agree. You know, and so it's inefficient to run the church. And I'm just going to play the Jesus is advocate. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> a pot blessing later. <laughs> We're going to have a pot blessing. <laughs> <laughs> pot blessing. Oh, um, I, I don't even remember Jesus the point. Juice. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think you're right in terms of an organizational structure. It would be much easier to operate as one single church across the whole country. Let's just say, forget the world. Let's just say mm-hmm. the whole country mm-hmm. would be much easier logistically to do that. However, would it accomplish as much as if we had different ways to, I, you know, I thought about this, um, you know, quite a while back. Christians are very unique in nature because we're called to do something different. Mm-hmm. If you ask a Jewish person to go out and 
invite somebody to the synagogue. the synagogue. Like, why? There's no point for them. Like, their belief system does not mean go out and um, uh, make uh, this, reach non-Jews. Thank you. Well, just go out and proselytize. Thank they did, you. Thank they you. They did that. What's not, that? They did that. Not as much as Christianity is right. compelled to do that, but they made they made Jews out of non-Jews. They were just not. It's not the emphasis. Correct. It, well, the I'm sacrifices to, and following the law and all that was the emphasis of that religion. Right. And but uh, going back to the church thing, that is certainly a goal as Christians, right? Mm-hmm. And so, if our goal is to do that, is it not a, an easy way to do that by making multiple ways to accomplish that goal? I think one of the problems is it's great. Different people like different personalities, whatever. But in one church, you can have all of that. I think the problem with denominations is how strict they have to be. And they do have to be. Otherwise, you can't be different. And if the leadership of any denomination, you go far up enough that that headship of that building or wherever that's coming from, they're the ones that make this strict. You have to follow this. It's no different than if the church you went to was was 20,000 people. Right. You would find that church being way more strict than a church of 20 people hmm. because the bigger an organization the bigger the organization is the more you have to be more none of us are going to like this have to control you know that everything's this way this way right. and, and i think that's the that's what we believe anyway i heard one pastor say one time uh, that whoever leads our small groups you know what i don't really care if they have this right or this right as long as they got this right i don't really care hmm. you know and wow that's pretty rare to hear you know that Really? Because who knows where they're going to go? Hey, there's room in Christianity to go that way or that way a little bit. You know, as long as you're not going to die for it or force everybody else to it. There again, I guess there's got to be guidelines. There's got to be control. Mm -hmm. And when you get into denominations, that's where you get into, well, this sets us apart. Mm -hmm. The Methodists. We have the method of (laughs) event. You know, so that's why they are a Methodist because they have the method. Now, we can't deviate from that method. Right. And other people would come along and say, well, no, there's more than one method, you know, and so we'll do this. And Assemblies of God is obviously where God hangs out. <laughs> the assemblies, it's in so. the Assembly of God. Yeah. All, yeah. all the other ones are missing him. Yes. Right. <laughs> what was the one? Church of God did split from the Assemblies of God. Yeah. It was Church, Church of God. God. Hmm. Church of God. Mm-hmm. And Foursquare is pretty similar. Yeah. Wait, I, I'm dead serious. I've never, never even heard, heard Foursquare. Square. Oh, it sounds a, like a website that I shouldn't go on. It sounds <laughs> like I want to order it? food from them. No, that's 4chan. Sounds, oh, like, yeah. <laughs> sounds like a dance. What is Foursquare? What's the uh, just highlights? Foursquare four is another branch in the Pentecostal. Pentecostal. Okay, it's Pentecostal. Pentecostal okay, denomination. It. Yep. Um, I I think I I think there is some validity to denominations. So I am not a Catholic and I, there are parts of Catholicism, key fundamental doctrines they hold on to that I cannot be a part of, you know, Mm -hmm. like there's, there's things I prefer. And, you know, you mentioned style of church sort of thing, that stuff, I think Mm -hmm. we can look over, but the difference between the denomination I'm a part of and Catholicism is so different such a a different interpretation of the bible on fundamental things i do think denominations have a purpose and can be good i don't think they're god's original intention because i don't think god's original intention was from my perspective for the catholic church to be so far off Mm -hmm. you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so like but i think he can use them but i think there is a an element of unity and um, spiritual maturity is like the only word I can think of that comes from being a part of something that you don't even necessarily like everything about it. Right. You know, I don't necessarily like this music or I don't necessarily like the way they do this, whatever. There's an there's an element of Christian maturity that you don't get any other way than by grow up buttercup and deal with it. Suck it Mm -hmm. up. Like it's not all about you. And I think that's probably one of the biggest 
downfalls of of mm-hmm. all these different denominations yeah. is I think it really limits a Christian's spiritual growth, you know? Yep. When there's so many options, when Christians get butt hurt about something at their church, when there's 11 other options within yeah. a 2 minute drive of where you go, mm-hmm. there's I mean there should be this God's drawing you to stay and stick it out. There's plenty of scripture to back that up. Mm-hmm. But from just a purely human side, there's no real impetus to stay and stick it out and grow. Right. I'll just go to somewhere new until they tick me off. And then I'll yep. just go somewhere new again. And like we Christians, I think, suffer too. Not just people who are not Christians and are affecting this in the mission, but we actually suffer Agreed. because of all this separation. I, I also believe that church hoppers, the ones who continually do that, mm-hmm. are um, it's also part of our society in general. Mm-hmm. If it's not tailored to me and everything I'm looking for, then I'm yeah. just going to go do something else. A- absolutely. It's like, okay, well, how about you have some input on that? How about you volunteer your time? How about you put in f- forth the effort to do it? Yeah. Or how about you also, like you said, suck it up, buttercup. Not everything's made for you. We got 800 people here. Like, yeah. we can we cannot be... There's stuff at my church I don't like. Oh, absolutely. I have a number of things. I actually have a list. We cannot be all things to all people, right? right? And, and I think we have to, ha- as a church, like any church we go to, it's of significant size beyond a small group. We cannot yeah. be all things to all people. Try and reach as many as possible. But, Correct. I mean, just there's limitations of our humanity. <laughs> Correct. The four of us have a lot of similar viewpoints, but if we really got down to it, we could easily find ways to separate. Sure. And I think that's where a lot of the ch- church hoppers and um, I've, they're going to see this too. I have a really close friend who is absolutely a church hopper is continuing to do that. Um, and, and in my opinion, I think it's spiritual maturity, mm-hmm. right? It, what's in it for me? Mm-hmm. I, you know, what are we doing? Cause this is, it, this rubbed me the wrong way. No, this church rubbed me the wrong way. Now this person said this on the pulpit and it's like, okay, are we yeah. ever going to find the happiness that you're looking for? Mm-hmm. You're going to be in a room all by yourself pretty soon. You will have very exhausted soon. every other option, yep. and there's going to be nothing left. To be very clear, you can still absolutely be a Christian and be alone in this world and absolutely sit in your house. You just can't be but, a healthy one. Correct. I was just going to say, it's uh, probably not the design. A hundred years ago, at least in this country, people... Uh, and people he knows a hundred years yeah, ago. Yeah, <laughs> okay. The, the, Let me the, tell you the, a story. The ten, the ten <laughs> different denominations that were uh, popular, they had clear enough distinct doctrinal differences that it made a difference. Nowadays, people are starting new churches over a style of music, and not yeah. even a doctrinal difference at all. Yeah. Yeah, we believe the same thing as them. Preference. We just don't believe in hats. Yeah. Oh, or we just like this kind of music. Or we That's what I think it, really disgusts we, God. I mean, I I'm, do. I'm sure we can all think of churches that have Hoop zero shirts. doctrinal differences, zero stylistic differences, yeah. and mm-hmm. still we got to be separate. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking of a very large church in the Twin Cities area with hoop shirts, and I don't want to attend there. We're very similar in actual spiritual beliefs. Uh, um, yeah, but I hoop, definitely. Hoop shirts. Hoop shirts. I'll hoop tell shirts you about them later. skinny jeans. Yeah. Oh, I know what skinny jeans You've been are. there. <clears throat> we'll talk later. Yeah. Yeah. Off camera. Yeah. So we can float <laughs> there. Anyway. <laughs> Dave must really not like this drink very much. Yeah, just, Look at everybody I'm else. I about to is. ask him, like, hey, do you want help with that? <laughs> <laughs> suck it up, buttercup. You, you suck it up. I kind of want the NA one, actually. Literally <laughs> suck it up. All right, fine. Jeez. Do you want a straw for that? Yeah. <laughs> Got a, a sippy cup? straw. <laughs> Uh, Dave, what are your thoughts? Non-denoms, denominations, because they're separate. Yeah, non-denoms has always kind of rubbed me wrong, just because <laughs> never, of the fact I've been fixated that on they've that. I've never, made a denomination yeah. called non-denominational. Which I've never thought about yeah, the irony yeah. of it. It's amazing. It's, they're their it's own brilliant. denomination. Oh yeah. man. Yeah. If it's only genius. they had the power to like hack into our channel. They definitely don't. But. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, I just I I honestly think yeah, it's it comes down to spiritual maturity mm-hmm. and I think the whole idea of you made me mad so I'm going to take my ball and go over here. Right. has 
it's kind of made us less efficient, less effective, less mm -hmm. impactful right. in the world, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. think it, possibly? It, kinda, it makes me sad. I mean, I think about that a lot. Like, man, if we were all, because we're all on the same team, Mm -hmm. Right. But if we were all working together on the same team, mm -hmm. boy, would we, we, we'd really do some damage, you know, mm. we'd really get in there and <laughs> we mess some stuff up, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we tear it up, you know, you know? We wreck people's lives, you know, but just think of, just think of the good we could do can if just we a, were a can force. You, can you just you know? imagine Paul writing yeah. in first Corinthians. <laughs> To the Jews, I become like a Jew. To those not under the law, I become like one under the law. I become all things, all people. To really tear that stuff up. <laughs> yeah. Tear it up, yeah. man. Yeah. Wreck it. Hey, Corinthians, you guys are really tearing it up. You yeah, guys are doing yeah. a great job. I'm going to write another later later, but right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys are tearing it up in all the wrong ways. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I thought about this. You probably, because I know you're... Um, your your knowledge is, is is quite vast, and I don't I don't mean that in a negative way. Be, when we look at like church history, where did that start? Where did the the split initially start? What caused it? Um, why is it continue to be perpetuated from there? Yeah, I think the biggest one that we all refer to is we call it the, you know the first um, Reformation mm -hmm. by Luther. And that's not the first. It's no, just the, yeah, I, yeah. So the that's that's the biggest one that's we go back one, to yeah. that we can see from organized religion to. That's kind of the biggest historical one we look back to. And I would look at that and say, that's a good thing. Mm. It's a good thing. And actually, if you look in church history, most of these denominations started from the failure of the one before them. Right. So a denomination comes up, big revival. They're doing things for God. And then years go by and they start sinking into ineffective kind of social groups. So another denomination comes Usually they're started with a revival, big mm -hmm. revival. They start, they're doing it for God, and then they go like this. And then another revival starts. That's where a lot of these denominations came yeah. from. Mm -hmm. And I would say a lot of the times it was for a good reason. There better be a reformation to what this has turned into. And we can all look at denominations and see where they started to what they've turned into is not the same thing. Right. So another group just comes back and brings it back to the basics again, you know? And so if we could just learn to keep it there, we could stop doing this, you know, mm. but or do we have to create a new group? If the one no, that we're in is off, how Can't do you, we... how do you get a, a revival in a group that is just so, uh, okay. And here again, I like hate mail and stuff, but some churches have become all about humanitarian efforts, right. all about mm -hmm. that. You, you're not going to change that leadership of that. That's what they've come all about. You have to start something new. That is leave not, the leadership behind. You have to, because they're not going to change. They're going to die for and force their agenda and how they've kind of changed for the years. Now, I'm not, anybody watching this, I'm not against humanitarian efforts, but that's not the number one thing the Church of Jesus Christ is called to do. Right. You know, we are called to draw people into a growing relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And, you know, so are you saying denominations are inevitable? I it, historically it looks like they are. Thank God. You think back, the first four or five great revivals and denominations that started there. Where are they today? Yeah. Think of every one of them. They're Flux. dead. Yeah, they're dead. Laundered out. They're no longer doing nothing. What are you gonna do? You're gonna say, hey, I, I, if I can't change it, listen, I'm gonna start something for God here. That this is mm. this is died. This, this is not doing the God thing anymore. I can see it in all denominations, all of them kind of go the way of the world in a sense. Right. Or just lose their passion or something. I don't know. Or they got to add but, to their passion. Hey, you know very well Yeah. that no matter how a denomination starts, yeah. look at history and where they go. Yeah, they all get they, off there. They all get off. All of them. It just seems to me like, I mean, it's just got to be because of the fall of man and sinfulness mm, of humanity yeah, yeah. is that reason we have a, like a few faults we are human <laughs> just, just a few <laughs> so in order to go ahead it, it just seems to me like this 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 urging or what we read about in the bible about this push for unity mm -hmm. seems to me like it should overpower that well i would think purpose first and then unity 
Unity is very important, but we could be all be unified on saving whales. That that's, would not make God happy. That's not unity what is not is. the goal. That would make whales happy, though. <laughs> would it? I don't know. Maybe if know. they sing all the time. Tip point. That's why Dave. <laughs> that's why Dave's so waiting for his paper straw. Yeah. <laughs> I, really am. I know a lot of people are kumbaya unity, uh, coexist. Yeah. That's not the that's goal. That's not the goal. Right. No. Mm-hmm. It is a way to the goal. It's the most effective way to the goal. But if you drop the mission, if you drop the goal, what good is unity? I don't want to be unified. See, maybe this is why we split. I don't want to be unified with my whole purpose in life is to save whales. I don't want to unify with people to do that. Mm -hmm. This is where I think it still comes back to that. I mean, if the end goal is still the same across the, let's say, 1900 instead of all the 2000, because there's some freaks out there um if the end goal is still the same Mm -hmm. is it necessarily a bad thing to have the multiple denominations now the intent may have been bad to create them because maybe it was something Mm -hmm. went wrong whatever the case may be but let's let's change one word in what you said instead of multiple denominations say multiple locations because no it's not a bad thing to have you know uh one church in in the Twin City area that would hold you know 130 thousand people probably isn't the best thing to do, right? Uh, but U.S. Bank but Stadium would let would even let's just say the best run church in downtown Minneapolis attract that many people because I still think it may not attract me, mm-hmm. it may attract somebody else. And because we have a different denomination, there might be one right down the block that would attract me. But how much better resourced would that one church be? Again, to I, hold in a perfect world yeah, where but, all of us are doing the right things and we're absolutely on God. That would be yes. great. Absolutely. Okay, sure. That is the right way to run an organization. I think what you're talking about is um, like we all love and we, we shed a tear over the family farm going away. I don't. I agree. Yeah, capitalism wins. Well, I think that (laughs) gets to the point. Comments. (laughs) Wow, (laughs) that gets to the point of this. We all we all love, (laughs) and we feel (laughs) endeared to the family farm. Yeah, but a family farm can't compete because of the resources it takes to make money today in farming. A family farm can't compete. You have to have research. I think that's what you're leading to. The more we are together, the big, you know, a corporate farm buys a bunch of farms and now they can be efficient. They can have combines that cost a million dollars. They can do, they can get something done. And I think it's kind of turned that way into church as well. My dad started a church years and years and years ago, many years ago with just him it was the first one. and no music and i mean you, know, you the could church. then but nowadays it <laughs> takes <laughs> to be Sorry. an effective church today it takes so much modern technology and equipment yeah. and excellence and that you know what a group of 30 people is not going to cover that they're just not going to i just think a church the church in minneapolis right this fictional one we're creating i wish it was there because it'd be pretty cool <laughs> if if it had all, I don't know what the number is, but all the people that go to a Minneapolis church, there was all in there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Most churches today are struggling just to get by, struggling with totally people to volunteer, struggling to pay their bills. That's why mm-hmm. so many are closing their doors. So many pastors are leaving the ministry with just burnout. But if we all came together, even just from a people standpoint, we could have so many different services and op- we could have a Sunday morning and a Sunday night and a Monday morning and a Monday and like, all kind of groups all and kind different of kind of groups and different outreaches for little personal you know hot button sorts of things and I don't I don't know when I think about the ineffectiveness to reach others because we're so disunified and the in the the inability or prohibition for us to grow spiritually because we're so disunified. I, I'm, I feel hard pressed to find a good reason besides major die for doctrines, which is mm-hmm. what Kevin kind of, yeah. yeah, which yeah. is what Kevin yeah. kind of said I, to, to, to have denominations. I wish there was one, you know, when you think about like the, the, the church and persecuted parts of the world in mm-hmm. China, Mm-hmm. There are no Chinese Christians going, 
Might have gone to the Underground Baptist. No, they or, didn't uh, sing yeah. the song. I, I'm going to go to the Underground yeah. EV Free. I think they're, they're much Christian. more Christian. They're Christian. They're oh. just, you I know totally what? Agree. This Jesus thing is, and you know what? I think Christianity mm-hmm. is more effective in those parts of the world. That, that's mm-hmm. my opinion anyway. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe not in sheer numbers when you just look at charts and data but i don't think half the people in the world who claim to be christian really are anyway so Mm -hmm. but i think they're much more effective at um what we're called to do when there's not a bunch of options i Mm -hmm. think there's an argument to be made though that if it wasn't for the splits denominations that the church could be dead today i'm sure yeah that's true and and so i wouldn't argue that and i think if you looked at you the example minneapolis Mm mm-hmm what if we had just one church? Mm-hmm. How many people would stop going because it didn't fill their need? Because yeah. it, and, and you're right. We could create multiple versions of it. We can create multiple services. But if people aren't there to begin with, we don't have the numbers to support that. So you're going back to an argument of, or there's another and I'm element. I'm playing Jesus' advocate, so. There's another <laughs> element that, you know, comparing to the persecuted church, and that is the element of just persecution. Right. We have so much free time that we can just argue points that don't matter. Like this. When 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 bullets are flying over your head, uh, you don't complain about the food. Amen. Right? You you yep. just you're surviving, you're Amen. keeping the main thing the main thing. Yep. Yep. You're busy reaching others and experiencing God. That's what you're doing. Yep. In in peaceful America where we've been Christian, that's all we've we remember. More money than we know what to do with. We, more free time we than we know what to do more with. More time to even uh Let's learn something different because I'm sick of that. You know, I'm, let's yeah. watch TikTok for two hours because I'm friggin' bored. <laughs> no, this is the personal. greatest time. <laughs> it was. <laughs> <laughs> this is the greatest time to ever be alive. Is it right here in Middle America mm-hmm. in 2022? <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> yeah, and we're arguing about. We're having a discussion about. <laughs> the, I, I think 2018. I'm done with my cocktail. 2018 was back. 2019 was pretty good too. Those are good. Those are good years. Big good boy. Yeah. Hi. Right, you dump finished. it. Finished. <laughs> <It's a, laughs> I wasn't watching. Maybe it's just on the there. floor over there. It's, it's over there. I, I give it to the dog. <laughs> the salty. Anyway, um, yeah. I, I just I don't know if we came to any answers. I guess. I mean, I actually, if we're being truthful, I'm actually more in alignment with you guys. I think it would be much better. But I think. Uh, but somebody's got to be the other side this? of the yeah. conversation. Instead of two thousand, I heard. I haven't counted them. There's two thousand plus. It's a lot to count too. Christian denominations. Uh, if, if five uh, there, there's yeah if we just bring it pull it pull it in a little bit uh more than one it might not be a bad thing but 2000 is ridiculous and plus all the non-denoms and all that you know <laughs> there's just here, here's what we can all agree on there is just way too much division yeah and what you brought up is probably the key thing how can i grow if every time i'm challenged i just leave yeah agreed how can i mature yeah. If you know, if if you say something that offends me, I go somewhere. I look for something that's not offensive. Mm. Hey, sometimes what God says is offensive. We better deal with it and grow. You know, through it. And so right. that that is something that's lacking in Christian America. So that's that something you've been challenged. You, you have said a bunch. You've got two options. What are your two options? Go or grow. That's mm-hmm. right. You can't do both. You can't do both. Mm. You're either gonna you run either go, or you're gonna grow, or you will stay and grow. But you yeah. can't do both yeah Mm -hmm. so dave when does your new denomination (laughs) church start Uh, dave denomination do you want to do do a shameless plug for your uh yeah it's zeppelin first (laughs) first. (laughs) that's 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 my denomination every message is based on a led zeppelin song yes we somehow loosely tie in a biblical truth you know next message babe i'm gonna leave you yeah you know it's (laughs) from the book one one. yeah (laughs) (laughs) from the book one yes Uh, we're gonna call the big room house of the holy yeah the houses of the holy that's what our churches are called the houses of the holy you know oh that's good stuff wow yep wow (laughs) well dave thanks for joining us yeah yeah Thanks yeah. for finishing your drink like a big boy. I did. Yeah. No straw needed today. No straw. No Next straw. time, though. Before we wrap it up, what what would we suggest to each person that is a Christian in going to church that none of us probably have the power to change any of this, but what can we do in our lives to make it 
as good as it can be. I would say volunteer getting involved. I think it, for me anyway, I mean, my wife and I, we changed churches a long time ago now, but the reason we did is because it was difficult for us to have an impact to the church that we were at, um, even while getting involved. So I think if you want to have an impact to the church, if you want to understand it more and you want to understand the mission, the vision, got to get involved in some way. Dave? Oh, he stole my answer. Well, just spoke up. <clears throat> Drink uh, up, Buttercup. You, you I would Mike. say, I would say, get involved. Uh, <laughs> my wife and I years ago. <laughs> they, they, you know what? So no. far, you're not wrong. So far, <laughs> what you're saying is not a lie. No, I know your story. Agree. Yeah. He knows. Yeah. That's a that's truly we your story. We could not make an impact, so we moved to a church <laughs> where we could. You totally stole my get line. Get behind the mission. Uh, of the yeah, get behind the mission. And commit the mission to that one. Commit to that church. <laughs> well, that's know? cool. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. You said it in such an articulate way. I, I love I, it. I really did. I really did. It just off, off uh, the cuff. Yeah, just, you I, know don't know where, just, I don't yeah. know where that came from, just, but it just you know kind that of was amazing. Off the tongue. <laughs> wow. Um, I, I would I would say this. I think the impetus from God's perspective and my understanding of the Bible would be unless it's a die for belief, like unless you're willing to take a bullet over a doctrine, mm. you do everything you can to stick it out. Mm-hmm. Like that would be, I think mm-hmm. if, if we want to stop all the division, like what's happened has already happened. I'm not sure there's any way to fix it now. Mm-hmm. Like we just, we got to deal with the mess we've made, mm-hmm. but to prevent this from getting any worse to increase our effectiveness in the communities in which we've been placed, I would say uh, to do everything within our power to stick it out at whatever church we're at. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, unless again, die for. If they start preaching that Jesus isn't the way, you should pro- you should leave. Okay, not probably mm-hmm. leave. Right. Um, but if they if they don't play the style of music or they ask mm-hmm. you to wear a mask or whatever, stick it out there's more important things at stake Mm -hmm. for you personally and for Mm -hmm. the mission at large. Yep. If it becomes Jesus and leave, leave. Yep. I, I really think that you guys are all on. I I would say this to everybody. My wife and I (laughs) find a church. If you're at one, great. A church that is doing the mission that God has called the church to do. And then, get involved, engage, help that church do its mission. And you will run into something you don't like. Somebody's going to say something you like. There's going to be a sermon you disagree with. You stick it out through all that stuff and teach your kids what you're doing. Mm. You know, we don't, you know, we didn't really like that. And we didn't, you know, know, yeah, you know, tell your kids, you know, the music's kind of changed. I don't really like it. But teach them what you're doing. But you know what's more but, important than that? Right. But this mission is so important, and we've engaged mm-hmm. here, and the mission hasn't changed. We're going to continue to help because, you know, it, it, if it's not the music, if we go to a different church, it might not be the music, but it'll be something else. Right. Something else will hey, take us off. Commit. Yep. Find a church that's doing it, not just one that you like, but one that's doing the mission. Commit to that, involve in it, and stick to it even when you're offended. Right. What about, so let me ask another question from the flip side. What would you say to a non-Christian who might Mm -hmm. be listening or watching and that Mm -hmm. can't see the reason behind all these denominations? Like like that that thing I think I started off with, why do I want to enter into this mess? Mm -hmm. What would you say to a Mm non-Christian in light of this? I would say, can I go first this time? Please. I would say to a non-Christian, uh, the same thing. First of all, you need to go to a church that, or, you know, find a church that you understand. Hey, they're reading out of the Bible. I understand what that message is. I get it. And it lines up with what they're reading. It makes sense. And then stick it out until you either have enough evidence to reject it or you're convinced it's true. Too many non-christians reject what they don't know they're rejecting right Mm. they're rejecting what they assume sure they're rejecting Mm. yep or they're rejecting because of preconceived notions or what they've heard culture say or something social media yeah yeah Mm. Mm. 
You guys? He's told my answer. <laughs> um, I would say pick a church and stick it out. <laughs> no. Uh, that was the last question. Okay. Oh, is this no. a new one? Oh, is that a new one? I think there's such a challenge in that too, and that's where um, I think styles of church definitely plays in because you can get um, a non-Christian who walks into, I'll just pick on the Catholics because it's easy, you know, walks into a Catholic church and says, what is going on here? This is insane. I don't understand what they're doing, what right. they're saying, why are right. they chanting, why are they doing aerobics? It feels yep. like a cult. And yeah. one of my favorite sayings, I know it's one of yours too, Shaheen, the reason people don't go to church because they've been to one before. Yep. And so I, my hope is maybe the first church that that individual walks into is not the right church for them. Right? We can argue about Sure. If we if we should have two thousand nominations or not, however we do, and so maybe the one they walk in on the first time is not the right one, but it doesn't mean we should stop searching. And when we find the right one, we should stick it out. We should absolutely get involved. We should start seeking it. To your point, Kevin, I love that too. Continue to go until you make the decision, essentially, that this absolutely is truth or this is horse absolute crap. horse crap. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Like that's, that's yep. where you should stick it out too, rather than just leave it in the, the ether. Um, so uh, that's where I think maybe it is a, a benefit today as it stands today, you know, where we're at 2000 denominations, whatever it is, maybe the first yep. one you walk into is not the right one. That is a, that I will agree with you. That is a huge benefit to have different styles to attract right. different, different people, non-Christians. Right. Yeah. And if you go to a church and you feel condemned, judged, put down, cut down, told you're bad, go to another one. Yeah. That is not what Jesus would have done. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Silver blood. Uh, g give me your rating out of 10. Two. Two. A four. Four for the N.A.? Three. What, what for the, oh, you for the alcoholic? Yeah, yeah, three. And the His NA. I would give that a six, maybe even a seven on a good day. Oh, okay. You know, all the episodes we've done, you've you never should, done this. That is the best idea. We should rate At the these end, drinks. Rate that one to 10. Because that was easy for me to go, oh, yeah, because to describe, yeah, yeah. I kind of liked it, sort of didn't. Mm. Right? That's maybe a we'll great, start doing the this. The number, yeah, 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 one to 10. We'll start to let doing people this. know where I'm at, this was like one step above whiskey. And Dave does not like whiskey. I was going to say, that doesn't do anything to let people yeah. know where whiskey, you're at because they don't know you don't like whiskey. Where's the baseline? Horrible. Whiskey's horrible. And then this is like one step above that. Well, to let people know where I'm at, blue is, uh, you know, um, great. It wasn't that bad, but it was very close. Okay, on the numbering system, well, zero to ten. You would say I'd this say is a one on a on a I, scale. I gave of, it a two. It was on a scale. I, mean, of, I drank it. No, no, on a scale of whiskey to ten. <laughs> that's, to 10. <laughs> that's where we need to know. It's right above whiskey. Two. Wow, okay. that yeah. vermouth does not sit well for you. No. I I would no. love to make you one without the vermouth just to okay, see if well, that's. Well, the cameras would, are going to be off soon. I would <laughs> give the NA version a seven. Yeah, yeah. I think it's very good. I, I like I said at the top. I was disappointed. I didn't get. To try well, the NA version. Well, next time you can apply your lips to Sheen's glass. Yeah. Well, enough <laughs> lips had touched that glass, so glass. I'm good. <laughs> glass. 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 Sorry, what? <laughs> you ever uh, think, who, who's better. a guy, who, who's a person who called it vermouth? That's a stupid name. <laughs> vermouth. I think it's Italian. Vermouth. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely is. Okay, so thanks for sticking around for this uh, this tangent this rabbit trail. Awesome. This is a good episode. Uh, if you want to know how to make this cocktail that none of us rated higher than a seven, you can do that <laughs> by visiting our website, letsdrinkandthink.com. Follow us on all the socials at Let's Drink Think and subscribe to uh, wherever you're listening or watching this from. And we will catch you on another episode next week. Thanks for sticking around. Cheers. Cheers.